Hi, I'm Dr. Kay Sweetser from San Diego State University, and I am going to talk to you today about how to do a qualitative interview and in a way train you so that you can go out into the world and do your own qualitative interview. So qualitative interviews are really fantastic because if you've approached the process in the right way, you are literally going to hear from your target publics exactly what you need in order to write your messaging. And so really think about that when you are creating your facilitator's guide, when you're um, creating that interview guide that you're going to walk through um, with each participant that you interview. You want to set up questions that enable a conversation and allow that key person, that um, you know, uh, example of your prime public, your prime stakeholder, that allow that person to tell you about what barriers uh, they have to do the things that you want them to do, um, what benefits they see to doing the things that you want them to do, and how they would talk about doing the things you want them to do with other people, hopefully to get those people to join them to do it too. So when you are writing your interviewer's guide, really think about the fact that you uh, want to set up questions that allow for that really, really deep conversation and get at the things that you need to know in order to write your messaging. So when you're doing that interview guide, one of the things that you're going to use is the funnel technique. Um, you're going to start really, really wide. And then as you go deeper and deeper and deeper into your interview, that's when you're going to reveal, this is why I'm talking to you. I'm hosting this event. And I would like to know, how would you ask people whether they would come? Up to this point, right before here, we were just generally talking and they had no idea really who the client was or what you were um, what you were uh, proposing to do with your campaign. And that's really important because the moment you say the client name or what it exactly it is that you're doing, that's the moment when it changes the conversation. And you want to get as much out of just their natural free associations and how they would think about things before that conversation changes. Um, so a couple of rules of thumb when you're setting up the interview guide, you want to make sure that you're not asking any yes or no questions, right? Always ask a question that someone really has to answer. Um, on. You want to set it up where it's coming into uh, this funnel system, where it's at the end when we really get specific about what it is that we want to know um, from the person and, and what it is that um, we're really, really getting at. And you also want to make sure that you allow for probes. And so probes are um, maybe on your interviewer's guide, you're going to put them as like bullet points or um, an extra piece of the script when when the person doesn't really understand the question or the person cannot really access an answer to the question that you have asked, that's when you come in with a probe. And so if you ask a general question, of course, you're going to pause and you're going to give the person a chance to think about, to hear the question, to think about the question, and then to answer it. And if in that time, the person you know, seems as if he or she doesn't really know, then that's when you would go into the probe and you would, you would help them access that information. And so that's when you say, oh, like X, Y, or Z, or you know, when you blah, blah, blah. Um, that's when you're gonna have that, that sort of um, more shaping of the direction you want the participant um, to go in. Um, so when it comes to actually doing the interview, I, I like to do the interviews on Zoom. Um, what's great about doing the interviews on Zoom now are that um, they can be recorded automatically. Uh, Zoom, if you have it set up correctly, will do a transcript, which is fantastic. And most of the ways that I have folks do interviews these days 
are where we, the researchers, the campaign folks, um, are actually on the computer, but we're having the person that we're interviewing call on the phone. And what I like about that is that means it is, you know, low stakes for the person with regard to accessing, you know, that time in his or her schedule. Um, so the person can be driving while talking, can be walking the dog, and it's a lot easier then to set up a meeting um, to do the interview as opposed to if you um, are gonna make the person come on camera and then the person has to worry about, you know, am I in a quiet spot? What is my Wi-Fi like? You know, do I look camera ready, blah, 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 right? So um, if you're gonna be in my campaigns class, then you're gonna do your interviews over Zoom and you're going to log in to the special campaign room that has been set up for you this semester, and you're going to um, open the room, as it were, and then the, um, the interviewee is going to call into a phone number and then um, put in the um, meeting ID code and then just talk as if he or she were on the phone. So that means that as the person who is conducting the interview, you need to um, log on to your computer you need to open up your SDSU Zoom so that you can get into the room. If, it, if you have some kind of a holding screen where it's not gonna let you in, that means you're not logged in to the SDSU Zoom. So you need to make sure and practice it ahead of time. You need to make sure you can open the room. Open the room a couple of minutes ahead of time, and then um, you do not have to turn your camera on at all, right? All I care about is the audio so that we can share that audio. And in fact, um, for, for the most part, we want to preserve confidentiality of our participants. And so um, even if they are going to call you via Zoom, um, we really want to have them not have their video on either so that we can preserve that confident confidentiality. Um, so you're going to make sure that you can open the Zoom room. You're going to give them some very specific instructions about how they dial in on the phone. And then you're going to arrive a couple of minutes early. And then when they connect, um, you're going to go into the interview. As you're asking the questions, make sure you're giving time for the person to really understand what you're asking. Sometimes there might be, you know, um, a bad line or hard to hear or something like that. So you want to make sure that you give the person time to understand what it is that you're asking. And of course, that you then um, allow them that time that they need to answer back. And so don't just jump in there with your probe if you ask the question and it takes a second for the person to answer. Like, give them a minute, take a deep breath, let them answer the question, right? Silence is actually your friend um, when it comes to that immediate um, end of asking that question. The purpose of the interview is to draw information out from them. So you're not gonna do a lot of talking. However, you do wanna build a rapport and you do want to make that person understand that you know, you're enjoying the conversation and you can relate to the conversation, right? And, and you, wanna, you wanna start to really build that rapport in the conversation. So as you do that, it's okay to um, you know, react to what the person has said. Um, the interview guide itself is a guide. It is not um, law of exactly what you have to say and how you have to say it, and you cannot deviate from it at all. You should ask all of the questions that are on there, but listen to that conversation. If the subject answered a question that you, that you have coming up, then don't ask that question right? Because it's just going to frustrate the person. Like, are you even listening to me? And if the person starts to go off in a direction that was not planned, but you're listening to it and you're like, this is actually really good. This is really helpful. You know, I know the team hasn't thought about this and this is a really good perspective. Um, if the person starts to go off into a direction that is helpful, then allow that. And then when you're done, that's when you can move 
back onto the script. Um, so listen to that conversation, be a part of that conversation. I'll tell you what, if you can't hear what the person is saying because of internet or Wi-Fi or whatever, then chances are the audio quality on that recording is also gonna be poor. So make sure that if you have a poor connection, you address it right away because otherwise the interview isn't going to be helpful at all. So I'm gonna show you an interview guide and kind of um, show you how you might go through it. When you have an interview guide, um, you 100% wanna be familiar with it. Remember, this is a conversation, right? And so if this is a conversation, you need to make sure that you sound conversational. So when you've written your interview guide, hopefully they are actual words that sound like um, you would use in a conversation. And you want to be familiar with the script so that it doesn't sound like you're reading, that it really just sounds like you're in this flow of the conversation. And so in the beginning of this particular interview uh, guide, we actually have instructions for, you know, how you're telling the person to dial in um, and, you know, what you're going to copy and paste and put in the email to the person so that they know at this time on this day, we're going to meet here and this is how you're going to connect to the, um, the phone bridge. And I actually don't even call it Zoom. I just say, I have a conference line for you to call and this is how you can connect to the phone bridge. And that way they don't feel like they have to be on Zoom. They can literally just call from their cell phones. Um, so then we get into the interview script. With your interview script, you want to start with, you know, telling the person a little bit about what you're doing without giving away too much. Um, and you want to let the person know what the level of privacy is going to be, right? And in this case, um, it's going to be confidential because you can hear the voice. And so there's no way that that can be anonymous because someone somewhere can probably identify that voice. Um, so the level of privacy that you're affording, even if the cameras are off, et cetera, that's all gonna be um, confidential. And then you need to ask for permission to record the conversation. And then you have to tell the person how it is that you're going to be using that recording. And so you see that um, we have all of this in the script. You know, thanks for agreeing for the quick interview today. My name is Kay Sweetser, and I'm a student at San Diego State University, and I'm working on this public relations project for my class. Now, this interview that we're going to do today is completely confidential. Um, your name and other personally identifiable information is not going to be used about you at all. Uh, I really, though, want your permission, if, if it's okay, to record this conversation today, because that's going to allow me um, uh, to really understand your perspective and review it again. Um, and since this is for my class, my professor, as well as my classmates may listen to it as well so that they have the benefit of hearing your perspective. So is it okay if I record? Right. And then we actually have written into this into the script here, pause. They're going to say yes, great. Uh, as soon as you opened the Zoom room, if it's a Zoom room that I've set up, it has been set to record. So it just is continuing on, on and on. Um, so then the way that this particular script is set up um, in the funnel is that um, each like notch in the funnel is in bold. And so it starts with, um, you know, a, a conversation opener. Um, you know, what would you say is one of your um, favorite places to go, like a store or a restaurant or a coffee house? And then you have to pause. The person has to hear you. The person has to decode what it is you're asking. The person has to identify what is my favorite place to go. Oh my gosh, I can think of all these great places that we have here in San Diego. What am I going to say? And then the person has to say it. So that takes a little bit of time. So give the person time to answer. Um, if the person really has no answer, that's when you can read. And in this case, the probe actually has a little bit of a script that goes along with it. And um, if uh, the person is like, oh yeah, okay, um, Starbucks. And you're like, Starbucks isn't really um, a local small business. 
Um, and so we have in here what you say, you know, that's cool. Um, but think about a small business that's owned by somebody locally. Um, so not like Starbucks or Dunkin Donuts, uh, a place that really is for locals and it's owned by somebody in the community. Like there's Nomad Donuts in North Park um, or Parakeet Cafe. Um, they've got a couple of locations around San Diego. Um, you know, whatever it is you're thinking through, it could be a shop as well. And then the person hopefully is going to give you a business name. And these are the questions that we're asking. All right, well, what kind of business is it? How did you hear about the business? How often do you go to the business? What do you like most about the business? Um, you know, what do you know about the backstory of the family that runs the business? Um, what kind of ads and things do you see? And um, how much of a part of the community is that business? So all of this, the person has no idea why you're asking them about local businesses. So this is the first notch. And then boom, now we go in one more. And so now it's like, okay, I'm really interested in whatever business it was the person had said. Um, you know, what makes you want to shop small? Um, when you're thinking about, uh, you know, supporting that business, um, how does that make you feel? And then here are some more probes. Um, and these are just set up as bullet points if the person doesn't really have an answer for how that makes him or her feel. Um, now we're going down to another notch, right? So that notch was pretty fast. Um, now I want to turn the conversation more to businesses owned by people from traditionally marginalized communities. And this is actually what the entire interview is about. It's about promoting a campaign that would end up promoting businesses from traditionally marginalized people. So um, in this one, it's like, okay, so tell me about a business that comes uh, or that, that is run by somebody from a traditionally marginalized community. Um, and then a couple of scripts in there in case you don't know. Uh, then these questions that come in there, um, now we have another even more finite notch um, in here where, okay, if you're supporting someone, um, then, um, you know, why would you support this business as opposed to some business that was, you know, run by, say, uh, a middle-aged white man, right? Um, and then we have questions that really get at why that business would be frequented um, and what the appeal is for shopping at that business. Um, and then uh, this particular one has some demographics. Honestly, um, the only reason this one has demographics is because we're kind of trying to figure out if people are in group or out group um, as, you know, as they're talking about these traditionally marginalized communities. Normally, um, you don't really ask uh, demographic type questions at all when it comes to these interviews. Um, and then you say thanks. And that's it. So if you're doing this interview um, as a part of my class, then when you do the interview, when you hang up, um, it's gonna send the file to me. I'm going to scrub off all those five minutes that you got there early. And I'm just going to create an audio file only for the time that you were actually doing the interview. And I'm gonna share it with everybody and everybody can listen to it. What we end up doing then is we listen to, you know, say 10, 15, 20 interviews. And as we're listening to all of these interviews, it becomes really, really clear about how we need to message in order to break down barriers so that people actually want to learn more about what it is that we're promoting and do what it is that we're asking people to do. And so we'll find out the language that they use, we'll find out how to approach that messaging, and we will literally, you know, from the mouths of babes, we will grab those words straight out of their mouth and we can put them into our messaging. So when you do an interview, make sure you're prepared, make sure that your technology is up and working and tested, and um, make sure that once you're in that interview, you're listening and you're having a real conversation because that's how you're going to get the most out of what that person has to share. And, and we've selected that person because that person is special. So let's make sure that we get the most out of that conversation. 
that's all I have. So happy interviewing. I cannot wait to hear uh, all of the interviews that happen for any of my classes. Take care.